Cool. So now we're recording. I think we're good to go. So I've got Brooke Smith and Serena Thompson, a couple of gals that I met at Train to Hunt this year. And they were kind enough to give me their time today to come on the podcast, talk about being badass lady hunters. I think we just named the episode now. Um, let's, <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get into it then. Uh, intros, whoever wants to go first, don't knock me down here. Trying. Um, I'm Brooke Smith. Um, I don't really know how to do the intro here. Um, I've hunted for probably over half of my life. Started out as a rifle hunter. Took up archery a couple years ago. Um, I still really enjoy rifle hunting, but just found a more of an intimacy with archery. I've gotten involved in Train to Hunt, and I'm really passionate about that, as well as the ladies hunting camp. Yeah, that's definitely something we got to get into after a while here. Serena? So I am Serena Thompson. I am the co-founder of Nature's Paint. Um, just like Brooke, I grew up hunting, mainly rifle hunting, and then switched to archery God, high school. Makes me sound old. <laughs> Super old. <laughs> we won't talk uh, graduation years. <laughs> but yeah, it's always been, you know, a huge passion of mine to not only hunt, but then to also teach um, others, specifically ladies, um, you know, to hunt and shoot, whether it be rifle, archery, um, that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a growing thing with the ladies hunting that's all it's all on the up and up and it's it's a cool thing now so so how'd you guys both get into hunting you just I mean parents hunted or boyfriends at the time hunted or what was it really that kind of got you going yeah no for me it was you know my parents hunted I went probably from so I was born in January October was hunting season so what I was seven eight months old and yeah. you know was going on my first hunt you know we, we really didn't have my sister and I we didn't really have a choice um you know because that was one of the main our main sources of protein besides the cattle that we raised um so yeah so I I did it from seven eight months yeah oh. you were forced right into it and what about you Brooke um, well, I didn't start hunting actually until I was 19. The boyfriend at the time actually got me into it. Um, I've always been raised or I was born and raised outdoors to a logging ranching family. So, so I've always been out in the outdoors and in the woods, but, but yeah, hunting started when my late teens and I just, from the first hunt, I knew that was my passion. Yeah. It's funny. You started rifle hunting and then went to bow hunting. I, I grew up in a place where there was more opportunity to bow hunt than there was to rifle hunt. So uh, my buddy was just making fun of me yesterday about how I miss everything with a gun, um, <laughs> you know, because I've shot bows for so much longer than I've shot, shot guns. I didn't, I didn't grow up hunting or anything. I, I kind of like mid late onset, right? Like 15, one of my buddies and I got into it. So it's kind of, kind of in the same boat, I guess. So you guys kind of had a similar start. One was parents, one was, was boyfriends. So I hit the nail on the head. <laughs> um, so there's ladies hunting camp and there's nature's paint and all that. Um, I know both of you guys are pretty involved with different hunting organizations. So what are a couple of those and, and what do they do and, and what do you do for those organizations? So I, um, I sit on the board of directors of the Oregon Hunters Association, the okay. Oshkosh chapter in Prineville. Um, you know, the, the, the Oregon Hunters Association, I feel like it kind of has a misleading name because it's not just about hunters. I mean, it's more about conservation and, and that angle of things. So, you know, we do a lot of fence work, um, work on elk habitat, work really closely with the Fish and Wildlife Department, just, you know, giving them feedback on, on things that we're seeing out and about. Um, and, and the Forest Service as well, because everything that goes on in those public grounds affects all of us. So. Sure, sure. And then uh, what, uh, let's just dive into the ladies hunting camp. I'm like, okay. I'm super <laughs> interested in this. I, uh, so, so my girlfriend, she, she grew up, her dad hunted, bow hunted, you know, we live on the west side and he's oh, every year that, you know, they'd haul their camper across to the east side of Oregon. 
and you know she was in camp with her mom and her dad and brother were hunting so like she was kind of shunned out of the the hunting thing and like you know her brother had killed a few elk on youth tags and she I think she's she shot two deer before her and I got together but you know her brother has a pile of of animals and he no longer hunts and she does now so it's kind of like flip-flopped but we got together and she's like oh you know I got a bow now and whatever and so she's all into it now and so she was like so badly wanting to go to ladies hunting camp in Oregon she was like well after we met you guys down south she heard about it and she talked with Rihanna about it and stuff and she was like all rearing and ready to go and then her dad's like hey I'm getting married and it's on July 21st oh man so it like falls right in the middle of when you guys were doing it here in Oregon mm -hmm. and but she was like she's all about it like follows it you know she's super interested so this this could be like a selfish play by me I want the down <laughs> I want the down and dirty on it and and just like go after it whatever you guys are passionate about it so I want to hear all about it <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll just tell you my experience with the first camp sure so, and actually that's where Serena and I met okay so are you guys involved in running the camp though or are you guys just okay, we're so instructors you... and, and we sit on the board okay okay cool so um three years ago mm -hmm. um the camp was just outside of monmouth and uh so i went over there like i said i i mean i had rifle hunted for years so i mean i was fairly confident in that but that's when i decided i wanted to get into archery um but honestly i was a little standoffish about even going to the camp just thinking that there's going to be 50 or 60 women, and I didn't know how that whole dynamic was going to be. A bunch Just, of cat fights. Yeah, that's honestly <laughs> what I kind of had in my mind. Yeah, right, you would think so. So I, I finally, I registered, and I've known Candy Yao for years. Um, so I registered and went, and it was honestly a life-changing camp for me. Um, so, I mean, I, I took the rifle classes, or the rifle class, pistol, shotgun, that was the first time I'd ever shot a shotgun. And like I said, archery was my main focus. Um, and just, yeah, I fell in love with the bow then. And it's just kind of been history ever since. But just the people that I met at that camp, well, I mean, obviously Serena and I have became really, really good friends. Um, but just an awesome dynamic of people. I mean, not just the instructors, but all of the other campers. I mean, everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And by the end of camp, everybody, I think, felt comfortable with one another to share their story. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was a lady there that her nine-year-old son wanted to hunt, and she was a single mom, and she knew nothing about hunting, and that's why she was there. She yeah. wanted to go and learn as much as she could to fill her kids' dreams. Yeah, so, that's pretty awesome there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what what is ladies' hunting camp, though, like? I understand. So it's a bunch of gals get together, spend some time in the woods. People come and teach you things all about, is it just hunting? Is it shooting any, I mean, I'm like pretty green on what it is, period. So we offer, it depends on the class or it depends on the camp and the, the instructors that we can get for each one. Sure. Uh, but at all of the camps, we offer rifle, archery, shotgun, pistol, what am I forgetting? Orienteering. Yep. Those are probably the five. Backcountry back hunting. Um, what, what to put in your pack. Uh, Self-defense. Self cool. So those are the basics. And then we fill in with other things such as, I mean, at the one Oregon camp, we're going to have a, a blacktail hunting class, turkey, turkey class. Survival. Um, survival. I teach how to tow a trailer. Um, yeah, that's an important one. Yeah. yeah. And like one of the, and so each of the classes are about an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we try to limit the size of the classes, um, depending on, on how many instructors we have, so that everybody gets a fair amount of time, you know, on the shooting benches and sure. and, and we break it down, especially in the firearms classes, um, as beginners, interme intermediates, and advanced classes, mm -hmm. so that we're not boring those who have experience with, you know, identifying the different parts of the gun and. Right. Right. It's nice to brush up on it every once in a while, but yeah, I might get bored sitting there listening to that as well. But mm -hmm. this is a safety. <laughs> yeah. you, guys are, you guys are creating a super unfair advantage though, because like every girl I've ever shot next to has outshot me with everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
I'll, I'll like build a load for a rifle and take it to the range and have Chantel shoot it because she can shoot. Her groups are way tighter with everything than I can shoot. And so I'll just be like, Oh, this, this load's built. Why don't we go down to the range and you shoot five rounds. So <laughs> that's you guys are, you guys are just adding to the unfair advantage. <laughs> I swear it's, it's like a, uh, it's like a God given talent that women shoot better than men it's a thing we can't help it yeah i mean gosh forbid you have a guy come in there and get get beat down by everybody so (laughs) but you have serena's our rifle instructor okay all right so go through kind of like say we're in a rifle class and and you know the average lady that so like i feel like there's kind of two different and I hate to like get into the stereotypes of it, but that's pretty much what it's going to come down to. Right. So like, if you think about it, the way that I look at it, at least is there's like a few different kinds of, of people in general that hunt, but mostly ladies, right. There's, you know, there's your, your kind of raised hunting and you just feel like you should do it and continue to do it. And then there's like, like you, Brooke, who got into hunting with your boyfriend at the time. And back then you were probably, you know, passenger seat like hey Brooke there's the there's the deer shoot it kind of thing right and then and then there's the ladies who like you guys have developed into now that are you know you guys go hunting together you don't necessarily you know independent woman don't need no man kind of thing (laughs) but you know z snapping on everybody but it's like so I, I think that kind of um ranking system might cross directly into like your novice and your intermediate and your expert classes, because there's a lot of badass chicks out there right now. Like as I'm putting together like lists of people that I want to have on my podcast, it's like, man, I've really got like, it's like a straight up 50, 50. Like you guys are here. I'm, I'm like trying to get Rihanna to come on here eventually. So if by some chance she listens, better message me back. Um, and then, you know, like, uh, you trained with Courtney Levesque, didn't you? Yes. That chick is insane. That mm. lady is so badass. Yep. I talked with her for a couple hours at Hoodoo, um, on a buddy of mine's podcast and she's like above and beyond, right? Like I wouldn't want to square up with that lady. For sure. <laughs> so it's like, is that kind of where your, do your rankings on like your classes fall right into that kind of, do you think? Yeah, I would say so. Um, You know, we get a lot of, I would say, more beginner, intermediate, not a ton of advanced, I would say. Um, You know, most of the ladies coming are, you know, they've either, lots have never even touched a rifle before, they've never shot, they're timid, they're scared, and then you have others that, you know, have shot a few times, maybe went out hunting um, a time or two, but you know, as far as like real advanced ladies, we really haven't had a ton of those yet. I would, yeah. what you say? Yeah. You know, which is awesome because that means we're getting, you know, a bunch, a bunch of newbies, which no sure. bad habits and more people to hunt and shoot. So, you know. right. Do you ever get the complex of like, if you did this, if you did a man's hunting camp, right. Oh, God. You would get, it would be so bad. It would be like a bunch of, you know, everybody be like, Oh, I got man's hunting camp in nine months. I better start working on this beard and get going, you know, <laughs> you know like lifting weights to be the manliest man there. And so I, I think like with the, with the platform that you're using, it's freaking awesome because, you know, I don't, I, I'm sure there's competition, right? Everybody's competitive. Right. But, yeah. but it's not to the point of like, you know, really like that, that. Like that. no, no. Yeah. And I mean, we get up every morning and Serena and I lead a hike wherever we're at, just, you know, for those who want to participate. And I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just a super supportive, I mean, whenever anybody's on the range and, and there's people standing by just waiting to shoot and, and you claim that medal, I mean, everybody's like, yeah, and high fives. And I mean, it's just, it's a really supportive atmosphere, yeah. which yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't convinced before I attended the first one that it would be like that. I thought it would be more competitive and, and catty, like you said before, but. But yeah. no, it's, it's, there's, I don't know, egos get left at the door, I think, when, when people, when the gals show up there, if there yeah. are. Those. Yeah, I, I think that's different, though. I, I think it definitely would be a big fat shit show if you had a bunch of dudes trying to do the same thing. <laughs> like, 
oh, you know, who's going to outshoot who and who's going to, you know, oh, yeah. who pulls yeah. an 80-pound bow and who pulls a 70-pound bow, you know. Exactly. It would be a cluster so bad. I can never even imagine that. I think, like, but anywhere you get, like, a good mix of people who are all have the same kind of concept in mind, I think you get that dynamic that you're talking about, but mm-hmm. it would just that would be so bad. I'm, like, keep going back to it because I keep thinking about how awful that would be. Oh, man. It's kind of like uh, – like I talked to Jesse about train to hunt is like the same way you go in thinking it's going to be one way and then you come out on a total, on a totally different end of the spectrum. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Train to hunt. And, and I use train to hunt as a comparison this year at the Utah ladies hunting camp. Just it's the same vibe. It's by the time you leave that weekend, you have a much larger family than you had when you got there. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just super supportive and. Yeah. And you go home with a new best friends. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm keep in keep in touch with a lot of people and and that's kind of cool you get all the new people because you don't have anybody coming in with a complex mm-hmm. right like oh i already know how to do all this so i don't what am, then what are you here for right like yeah. if you already know how to do it why are you you know why are you coming but you guys are super welcome to that right mm-hmm. yeah so, i mean there there's a chance down the road you know somebody comes in serena that outshoots you on the on the rifle range and you might learn something from them you know but oh. I still learn things, you know, from the beginners and intermediates. I mean, I feel like I'm always, you can always learn something and I'm always open to it. So. Right. Right. So what are the plans for ladies hunting camp? Are you guys going to start doing more or is it kind of going to be the same Utah, Oregon and the same kind of plans or, or what's going on with that for the future? I mean, you have the one coming up on the 21st, right? That weekend. Yeah. And then one right after the following weekend oh you have another one yeah Mm -hmm. so we have two in Oregon this year we had one in Utah I think the hope is that they want to you know expand and do more camps in other places I've heard talks of um, Arizona in the spring when it's crappy weather here and nice (laughs) there (laughs) yeah yeah when all the Oregon people are have their RVs down in Arizona right so all the retired people that live here in the winter or in the summer I mean Mm -hmm. um I lost where I was going with that. I was going to ask you something. Like I said, I just sit here and blab because I'm terrible at podcasting so far. Um, <laughs> but so wait, when's the one after the 21st? Is that in Oregon too? Yeah. Yeah. It's the 27th, whatever that. I'm no. going to have to chat with you guys on that. Cause I'll probably be stuck out on a fire somewhere. I'm going to have to, is that one full? I think it is. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, we can check though. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. after. We'll see. Yeah. I might have to ship Chantel up to you guys for the weekend. Yeah, um, we take good care of her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you don't, it's fine. She'd have lots of fun. It, as long as she makes it back, that's fine. <laughs> I'll be. She she gets mad at me anyways during the summer because I end up leaving for a bunch of weeks at a time. But so so, who do you think in general, ladies hunting camp is for? I mean, is it for anybody? Do you think any lady that has any little bit of interest in hunting or you know just goes in the in the shotgun seat with her husband has something she could learn there oh absolutely and and i i always stress you don't even have to have an interest in hunting to be honest with you my uh my stepmom went to camp last year she has no desire to hunt but just the learning how to how to shoot guns getting comfortable with firearms um I mean, even the orienteering for, you know, just being out hiking or, you know, so yeah, you get lost. I mean, you learn how to use a map and a compass and, and that's it. You learn what your pace is. And um, so, yeah, you don't even have to really be interested in hunting, just outdoors and you want to learn yeah, that's, firearms. That's pretty neat. So, and then we, we're super fortunate that we get to do uh, Benchmade sponsors a, um, quick quartering and skinning demonstration. Oh, cool. So in Utah, we got to use a buffalo. Um, and then in Oregon, we get to use um, elk. So, and elk. the ladies the ladies get hands on to get in there and, and skin out the elk and quarter it, quarter it up. And put it in yeah. the back. Yeah, put it on their back so they understand how heavy it is. And Oh yeah, yeah, that's no joke. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome that you go, you go through like the whole thing. Cause I think that's one of those things like um, I don't know. It, it just gives you that little bit of comfort that like you can go in the woods by yourself and be all right. Like, you know, even when I first started hunting, I, I was out every day doing dumb stuff, like never going to kill something. Right. Like 
wind at my back, sun in my face. Like, why can't I kill a stupid deer? You know, but then you think about it, like you finally shoot the first thing and you walk up on it and you're like, Oh, cool. So now what do I do? Right. And then you're like, just butcher this thing. I mean, you get all the meat off of it, you know, in the end, but like you just totally, you know, cause I didn't, like I said, my, my dad didn't hunt and my mom didn't hunt. So I like, you know, fly by wire kind of thing and just kind of figured it out myself. And, and now there's a ton of good resources, right? You can go online and figure anything out. You can get a detailed video on skinning anything and cutting up anything, but it, it doesn't really replace the hands-on factor. And I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, all of the skills that you're teaching, especially like orienteering, that's like such a lost skill. Everybody's yeah. like, Oh, well, it's cool. I got on X maps. Well, like, yeah, until your phone dies or you drop it in the creek or whatever, and then yeah. you're five miles in and you don't know where the hell you are. And so just having a paper map as a backup and being able to reference what you're looking at on the ground versus what it looks like on a map is is pretty huge. Mm -hmm. so pretty much, you guys would say you equip a lady with the basic skills that her and one of her other lady friends or boyfriends, maybe she's maybe she's the hunter and, and her boyfriend doesn't know crap, so maybe they're going in the woods together and she's teaching him. Like you would think you're sending them into the woods with, with a sense of assurance and, and like they got an idea. They're going to be safe for the most part. Right. Yeah. Yep. And have a clue. I mean, we all don't really have a clue when we go out at the beginning. <laughs> right. But you're, you're starting on the right path. So. Yes. Yeah. They have, a, we give them a spot to start. Yeah. yeah. Then they have, you know, even after camp, they have like this whole network of people, resources, and, you know, and they reach out to us all the time and, you know, we can give them tips and um, things like that, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's kind of cool. Last year, a group of ladies from the Oregon camp, they got together and went on a, on a general cow, I think it was a cow elk hunt, mm -hmm. um, up in the Cascades, and I think they're planning another hunt this year, but so it's, I mean, at first, I kind of pictured it as women came to the camp because they couldn't learn from their husbands because, I mean, men try to teach us in a certain way, and sometimes we learn better from other women, not, yeah. not, down, not downgrading men or anything, but sometimes we just don't listen or they get frustrated with us, and that's yeah, what so. I found a lot in the trailer class, just because the ladies have tried to get to a trailer and their husbands or boyfriends get mad at them and yeah. ends in a fight, and so... Um, so, I mean, we, we teach the skills, so they're confident and they can go back and show their husbands what they've learned, right. but there's this whole other thing that has blossomed in women who maybe, maybe they don't have a spouse. Maybe they're just interested in hunting or, you know, like with Serena and I, I mean, we hunt with our husbands, but now it's awesome that we have a, another option, you know, to go hunt with one another. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Chantel and I, you know, we hunt pretty much. Pretty much elk season, you know, I hunt with buddies and, and blacktail season is kind of when we spend the most time together in the woods and she bow hunts. And so she's got a decent rifle tag for elk this year. And so I'm, I'm more, and you know, like, I don't know, I, as the years go on, I sound like I'm 90, but I, I'm only 23, but as the years go on, like, baby, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. I don't want to make you guys. We I told you we wouldn't discuss the years we graduated. You brought it up, right? I, hey, sorry. Um, okay, we'll go back with me feeling ninety then. Okay. Um, I like that. Sometimes I wake up and feel ninety, but uh, I'm like getting more joy out of you know seeing Chantel hunt and be successful and whatnot. So like this year, I'm like I don't even really care if I shoot a blacktail. Like I really just want her to kill a blacktail, you know, kill an elk and whatever. And and she's. She's all about it. There's been days she had a cow tag last year that it's normally a good cow tag, but big fire burned through pretty much all of the public land to hunt on. And so they were salvaging a bunch of timber. And so there was trucks in and out all day, every day. We saw like three elk, you know, in six months and she didn't get a shot on any of them. And so mm -hmm. I was more disheartened than she was, you know, she had more drive than, than I did to go on that hunt where I'd wake up and be like, you know what, forget about it. Like, it's raining or whatever. And she's like, no, I want to go. So then of course I'm more willing to get out of bed and get after it. But I swear it, when it comes to heart, you guys it comes to heart and shooting <laughs> will outperform the crap out of us. I don't know what it is, but so, so with that, what, what mix of, 
of like lady personalities do you get there? Cause that's another thing that I kind of want to get after. There's like, you know, the movement, the, the lady huntress movement and I want to get after it and I'm probably going to catch some flack about it, but like, it's, <laughs> I don't know the actual word. There's like not, not a word in my head. So I'm going to use like bikini hunter ladies. <laughs> if that's a phrase. That's a like, rabbit hole. That is a rabbit hole. I like the rabbit holes. We'll do it. I <laughs> like Barbie Hunter. Barbie Hunter. That's pretty that's pretty good. Yeah. Talking, yeah. I like Barbie Hunter. We'll use it. You could coin that if you want. <laughs> we can get some shirts made for you if you ever wanna if you ever wanna become a Barbie Hunter yourself. So like suddenly it became cool to be a Barbie Hunter. And do you get the Barbie Hunters or do they not really care about hunting i don't think we have i don't really think we get any of those at camp no i mean most everybody that comes you know they're like legit hunter well they they either have hunted a little bit or they're like really into like learning about it i wouldn't say they're you know the kind that are gonna go fishing and crop top and mm -hmm. cut off jeans and to be yeah. fair, if I lived in Florida, I would definitely go fishing in a crop top and cut off jeans. Possibly. Oregon weather is not designed for, no. I mean, right now it's a thousand degrees outside. Right. I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't get them. Like, they're out there, they post pictures and they're, you know, checking trail. Like, if I were to wear a bikini top <laughs> and cut off shorts to check my trail cams, <laughs> Holy cow. Do you know what my legs would look like? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the land of poison oak. Right. Oh, we got, you guys have it over there? We don't have it over here. Thank goodness. Not here, yeah. but I get it. So Nate and I, we go hunting in Northern California for blacktail every year. And we usually have to kind of split it up where he hunts a little bit. And then I hunt because we have the kids and they can't, the terrain is just too, too tough for them. And like, if he goes out and hunts before I even get out there, I'll have poison oak. Yeah. Hands I'll have it. Is that one of the X zones you guys hunt there? Is it like up last in area? In Northern uh, zone, zone B. Oh, B zone. Cool. That's a, yeah. That's a unit I used to hunt a lot. Yep. Um, yeah. Chantel's poison oak is awful. We go, <laughs> she's had to take uh, prednisone for it a couple times in the past. Like she gets it in February or March when the bow shoots start is when she gets it. Oh yeah. I got it off of six months after, cause we go down every October of course, I got it then. I got it all over my boots. And then I didn't pull those same hunting boots out um, until six months later in the winter. And I got it. <laughs> no way. Yes. I yeah. I can roll I can roll in the stuff and get a couple little, so can, yeah, Nate can couple little dots. But the Barbie hunters don't seem to get it. So they must be doing something. It's, I guess when you, <laughs> maybe the spray tan creates a barrier. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think they're just posing on the side of a road. Yeah. I mean, it's getting out there. Yeah, it gets, it gets to be a wee bit annoying, you know? So like just on the, on the social media platform, right? Like what, what will you do for a, for a like, you know, you did, have, did you catch that bass? We don't really know, you know, right? Did, you know, I it's, oh, let's, let's tear down the rabbit hole. I mean, you guys, here's the thing that like, I have an immense amount of respect for, for, I don't know how to properly word this. I'm not trying to be PC. I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. Um, there's like a, a certain pressure, it seems like, with the amount of, of Barbie hunters that are out there for, you know, it, sex sells, right? In, and that's kind of what, I mean, you laugh about it, but, but that literally is the thing. I mean, I didn't want to go into it, but now I'm into it. Um, <laughs> it's, there's like a pressure and it's like a, a thing where, where, it's like a constant, constantly being objectified, right? So like, I have a respect for the ladies like you guys and Courtney and Rihanna and all the ladies that are, that are hunting and straight up like, you know, pants, shirt, like proper clothing. And, you know, like, you don't feel the need to, to do that because you don't really give a shit. You're like, hey, I'm going to shoot animals. And, and that's just how it is. I don't really care. Right. So there's like that, is that like a pressure that you guys feel from, I don't, I don't know who you would feel it from, but is that. I don't, I mean, I'm going out there to hunt. I'm going out there to do what I enjoy to do. And 
I mean, I'm just doing my thing. I don't care. I don't care what I look like. The elk don't care what I look like. Right. I, I mean, don't give a shit. I I'm just, putting nature's paint on so the elk can't see me. I'm not going to be flashing around in a bikini. That's just. That was a solid name drop on the nature's paint. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Name yeah. drop. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, uh, I just, I don't know. It's something that it's like a slightly bothersome to me, right? Like somebody's daughter out there, but. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not, I, for me, it's just, it's not practical because. Sure. I, maybe she's out there hunting in like that or yeah. fishing like that. I mean, and if she is, kudos to her, yeah. I guess. But it's just not us. No, it's just not our style. So yeah, I mean, there's there's the whole thing. Like you look at these pictures, and if you really kind of look at them, right? Like you draw a length is two inches too short, and you know you're <laughs> like shooting a kid's bow and like <laughs> smacking the trigger, and you're just like, do you really? You know what I'm saying? Like, three guys, we're doing a video. We're going to post just the audio, but we're going to just like face palm and smash your head into a table. So, you know, it's, uh, that's like, it just makes, if, if you know what you're looking at, it's pretty stupid. Like, it is. Listen, you look like an idiot. Right. 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 I had the Oregon coast. If I, if I hunted the Oregon coast in a pair of shorts, like you said, my legs would be raw, like a mile into a unit. Yeah, I get destroyed by by berries with pants on. So, that's, right. you know, let alone if I'm hunting with my pants off, which <laughs> nobody it would probably be, <laughs> might keep people out of the unit that I'm hunting though. So. Well, I'm like, we have manzanita over here that's higher than my head. Oh yeah. I mean, by the time I'm done with a hunt, nobody wants to look at me. I mean, nobody I'm, wants to look at me. Nobody wants to smell exactly. me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just. I think we just like to keep it real. And I mean, this is the reality of it. There's right. no sense in Sugar glorifying dough. it. No. I mean, it, it's hard work and it's a lot of dedication. And I mean, it is what it is. Right. And that's, I mean, you guys build success. You guys hunt public lands. You don't, you know, like there's, there's a lot of canned hunts that go on. I feel like with a lot of the people that are more like into the modeling thing and like, you know, approaching, it's like, it's like hunting models, right? You guys aren't hunting models. You guys you guys want to kill animals and, and eat them. And, you know, that's pretty much what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that with the, I mean, the problem is too, is then those ladies that are doing that, you know, have a much bigger presence because there's a bunch of dirt bags that just scan the thing for a chicken, a bikini with a fishing pole or a bow or whatever. So they become the face of women hunters, right? Instead of something like, ladies hunting camp being hey here's a bunch of of legit like chicks that are out doing a good job you get like look at this you know you look like an idiot with your draw length being too short rather than you know yeah i mean you just have to hope that the people that are looking at those pictures know the difference because mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you combat that you just i mean we just have to do what we do and you know, we take pride in what we do and we want to, you know, we want to do proud by the hunting industry. I mean, right. not, not that we're trying to impress anybody, but I mean, the hunting industry, they have a hard enough fight on their hand, just trying to keep the public lands and everything else going on. But we just need to work to, to help them out as much as we can. Right. And then there's, that goes hand in hand with the, like, there's too many people bashing other people, you know, like, Right. I mean, yeah. we're, we're sitting here bashing the Barbie hunters just yeah. as we talk about it. But like, are the Barbie hunters actually hunters? We don't really know. But right. um, either way, I mean, if they are, they're, they're still ambassadors in some way, right? They're buying a tag, they're going out and they're hunting. So like, still there is some way they're doing some good. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I just, I, I don't know. I wanted to go after it because both of you guys are, are, you know, I, I would hunt with either of you and not be like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't think that I would have to be like, Chantel, don't worry. Neither of them will be wearing a bikini while we smash through the berries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, cover that up. The elk will see, you know, we live in Oregon. We all got pasty white bellies. Like, <laughs> the elk are going to figure it out real quick. So, yeah. I do want to get, I want to touch on the extreme huntress thing. What, what was that all about? Second place. Yeah. First. Yeah. First. <laughs> I voted. I won't I mean, tell you who I voted for, but I voted. You know, 
I don't know. It was one of those things I got. I got into it. When you look at their website, you know, they look like they have a legit, you know, like story behind it. They want to get women and kids and the outdoors. And that's kind of what, you know, Brooke and I, we were into that kind of thing. And so that's where it started. And then you kind of get deeper into it. It's, it's a shit show. Really? I mean, there's so much drama. It's stupid. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I saw, all I saw was the picture of you in like the African safari shirt that oh, said yeah. Extreme Huntress on it and the hat. So like, what's the shakedown on the Extreme Huntress thing? You know, it's more of a reality show, honestly. Okay. Like, I mean, I'm glad I did it because I learned a lot. I got to hunt, you know, some exotic animals, which I'll probably never hunt again. Um, you know, so it was a cool experience that way. I mean, I grew up, I do all of my own hunting, so it's not like I have guides. So it was different, but just the whole behind the scenes where they try to get you, you know, to bash on the other ladies, um, that are, you know, the other five ladies that are in the competition. I just, I don't know. It's not me. I just want to go. I want to have fun. You know, if some other lady kills something bigger than me, I could honestly care less. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, but then it's just, there's, it's a lot of drama, which is unfortunate because it could be a really awesome thing. Right. Hopefully it, hopefully it changes over the years. Maybe somebody out there somewhere out of my very small amount of listeners will hear this and be like, <laughs> Hey, Serena thinks we're full of shit. So maybe we should fix that. They won't care. <laughs> no. They're like, well, she was just the first loser anyways. People, right. only, care. People only care about what the winner says. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> right. And is, is it really all about votes? Because I've, you were, like, in the lead for a while. I, I followed it a little bit. Um, Nate no. had posted something on, I think it was, like, iFish or something, and I read, like, hey, my wife's in the running for this. So like, go check it out. So I checked it out, and I was like, oh, she looks legit. So I voted for you. Well, that, uh, but um, now – I feel now I feel bad because I voted for the first loser. So. <laughs> first loser. Um, you know, votes, they can sway, you know, it a little bit. Um, I personally, I don't, know, I don't like the voting part of it. I just, I don't know. People get tired of you begging for votes. Right. Um, Yeah, it's like me begging for downloads. Right. On this right. podcast. By the way, you guys subscribe and download. <laughs> I subscribed the other day. Yeah. One yeah. Of my, I have like 12 followers. I'm super weak at this podcast. You'll get, you'll get there. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm just, I was curious about it. I, I hadn't heard anything about it. Obviously, I, our, our short 30 seconds of conversation was watching you guys win or whatever you did at Train to Hunt. And so, <laughs> so now this is our conversation. Brooke and I have texted a little, but I haven't got into any of the, any of the things I was curious about. So nature, <laughs> we're just going all over the place. Uh, nature's Paint. What's up with that? Yeah, so Nature's Paint. I'm the co-founder. It's an all-natural, easy on, easy off uh, camel face paint that I actually created in my kitchen. Really? Yeah. Can you use it on your stomach if you hunt in a crop top? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> okay. It's great so. for body paint. All right. Yeah. I actually had somebody at ATA ask me if, uh, if it was good for body paint. Nobody knows what you do with it after you buy it. No, it was also the same guy that asked me to put ketchup on his hot dog. <laughs> Dude, I, that's the thing is you guys bring the creepers out. I swear. <laughs> like Courtney, Courtney was saying too. She's like, yeah, I reply to like 98% of my of messages if you guys send them to me. And like, and Steven was like, yeah, the other 2% are like weirdo creepers. <laughs> you, guys, right. you guys reel in the creepers. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Well, they have um, a computer to hide behind, so. Yeah. Well, except for the ketchup on the hot dog. That's weird. That's super creepy. <laughs> can, we, <laughs> can we hear the story behind it, please? I don't know. Like, I was hungry, so I went to the food court. I don't even know what I got. I think I got a sandwich or something, and I went over, you know, they have their little stands with the ketchup and mayonnaise and all that, and I was fixing my um, 
sandwich and this guy comes up and uh he has a actually has a pretty successful show um and he's like can you put ketchup on my hot dog <laughs> like super creepy and i was like sure <laughs> hey at least you're willing i mean that says something about you, you know uh, hopefully he bought paint after that oh well, it was i gave him some i think yeah. oh yeah like here go away here's some paint leave me alone <laughs> yeah so yeah that's good to know so if any of our barbies are out there listening if you guys need to stay hidden while staying cool getting the proper amount of airflow nature's paint put it all over your bellies your backs your thighs whatever you need uh i'll help you with the uh the selfless ploy there on um advertisement there goes a whole nother realm of hashtags dude yep <laughs> hashtag, hashtag potty paint hashtag catch up my hot dog um <laughs> Dress my dog. We'll go with. Um, yeah. How do you? <laughs> all right. Um, how do you think that women are changing the hunting game? Because, like I said, I've got all these. Like, you know, I had a good podcast on elk hunting with my buddy. I've had one with Jesse on train to hunt stuff. But like, I'm more excited about getting like you guys on here. You know, possibly getting Courtney and Steve on here, and you know, people like that because the the ladies that are good at this just bring a whole new dynamic to it right for years and years and years it's been like all right honey i'll be back in a week i'm going hunting with the guys or you know lady stays in camp and cooks or whatever and so like i know it sounds effed up it really does but like that's how it's been right i'm not wrong you look at just the last 70 years like you know things have changed Oh yeah. Drastically. So, I mean, now we look at the last 10 years and I mean, who was a big, maybe like Michelle Bachman, maybe it was like one, one lady hunter that was on TV and now it's a regular thing. Nobody thinks twice. They're like, Oh, you know, so-and-so Rihanna Carey, she's like, you know, top notch for Under Armour. So like, what do you, how do you think that, or why do you think that the popularity is, is gaining so quick? Cause it's not just ladies that are, that are following these ladies. Right there's there's a bunch of of dudes that are really accomplished hunters themselves or outdoorsmen in any way that are that are following these chicks and and getting inspiration from them what how do you think the ladies are changing the game and and why do you think it's becoming so popular like the popularity i mean i think well i think part of it's social media i think there's always been a fairly large amount of women but it's just became more public okay i mean honestly um so i I mean i I, you have to contribute quite a bit of that to social media i would think yeah sure Um, and i mean society's just changed in the last 20 years of what's acceptable or or and women have i think became more independent and you know not the well if he can do it i can do it better per se but why why is there the stereotype that women can't be out there doing that yeah, I mean, that's, that's women drive crops, women farm, women do, I mean, a lot of the same stuff men do. So, yeah. So why just bringing dinner home? Why is it any differently? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I'm just, just trying to get, you know, a, a more rounded opinion on it because it's, to me, I, I think I'm kind of um, on the other side of what, what you said. You think there's always been the same amount. I think there's a lot of ladies that are getting inspired by social media you know, now that it's, it's available to consume, you know, without, without buying Eastman's hunting journal or something like that, you know, there's all these podcasts, there's all these YouTube videos, there's, you know, Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff where, you know, a girl that's 11 years old might be like, Hey, I want to hunt because I look up to so-and-so right. Where years ago, maybe she's like, Oh yeah, you know, my husband hunts big deal. So I think it's changing more. I, I would say, I don't know if there's a statistic on it that somebody's tracked, but I I would, I think it's had to have at least doubled in the amount of ladies that hunt in just the last 10 years. And and with having more ladies out there, we're getting more kids out there. Yeah. I mean, the kids would normally be stay home with mom while dad's out hunting. Sure. So, I mean, in, in turn, we're just getting a lot more ladies and children in the woods, I think. Right. And that's the, when you think about the future of hunting, right? in in how many years or in, in you know four years of voting or you know four more years of, of ballot measures and you know a 10 year old's gonna vote mm-hmm. so you got to think of whatever you're teaching a 10 year old now you know the next in in four votes from now 
they're going to be voting on the measures that affect us. So, so whatever we can do now to, you know, inspire the kids that maybe they, they wouldn't have been anti hunting, right. but they might not have hunted. So they would have been like, meh. Yeah. Oh, save the cougar. Sure. You know, right. kind of. And that's the thing is educating the kids so that they can educate their friends who don't have a clue. I mean, right. at least even if hunting's not their thing, they can, they can tell them where the meat comes from and mm -hmm. you know how they're harvested and right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it does. It comes off the meat tree. <laughs> right. Yeah, nothing actually. They grow it. I think they are now growing. Like, yeah, it's weird and gross. <laughs> I think I did see something on Facebook where they like grew meat. Yeah. yeah. Disgusting. But that's the other thing too is like everybody tailors their uh, social media accounts, right? Like, I don't see anything from like anti hunters, you know, because I don't, I don't follow them or interact with them or anything. So like in the same boat as we feel like we're gaining all this steam, you know, are we, or are we just preaching to the choir? Because on this, on the other end, all of the same people. So say there's, you know, what is it? 4% of, of Americans hunt something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. And let's just, I don't know the percentage. So we'll say like 10% are, are 100% anti hunting, which I think is probably a high number, but we'll go with it for the ease of, of calculation. So if 5% hunt and 10% are against it, that leaves 85% that are just like, man, who cares? Whatever sounds good at the time is going to sound good at the time. So like mm -hmm. with you guys, you know, putting the, putting the right foot forward and, you know, portraying yourselves properly, I think, you know, plays into, it's crazy. Like I didn't have a cell phone, you know, until I was like 17 or 16 or whatever, when I could buy one. And, and now it's like, you go to the doctor's office or something and kids are trying to swipe magazines because they think it's a tablet or whatever. So like, <laughs> earlier and earlier, they're getting exposed to, to social media. So I feel like being, um, and it falls back to that like ambassador thing of, of being proper and, and presenting yourself in the right way, just plants that seed. Right. And I don't know really where I'm going with it, but just oh, can I tell my paint party story. Sure. Okay. So, um, you know, those paint parties where usually the gals go drink beer, wine or whatever, and paint a picture. Oh, um, oh, like a sip and yeah, sip and paint or yeah. So there was a gal, and I had kind of con she was an acquaintance. She had actually came to my house and taught one of these classes, and I had been to several that she had hosted. Serena and I went to one that she had hosted, and um, always a good time, whatnot. Well, last November, I was on our way home from Oregon Ducks game, and I was just scrolling through Facebook before we ran out of cell service, and. And I saw a post that she had posted. And mind you, she owns her own business. Okay. She was going off about trophy hunters. <laughs> and mostly, like, mostly trophy hunters with, you know, like African animals. Um, okay. And she used very colorful language. And basically that all the trophy hunters needed to be killed. Summed it up. I still have it on my phone, but anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm like, so I think I sent a screenshot to Serena uh -huh. and I instantly unfriended her, but my dilemma was that following week I was supposed to go to a paint event that she was hosting. It was a fundraiser. I'd already paid my, my money. And I, my, one of my friends was, it was a fundraiser for her deal. And so I didn't really want to back out. Right. The next morning I left for Illinois for a whitetail hunt and, and I stewed on it the entire time. I sat in a tree stand for four days and I mean, it was just on my mind how I was going to deal with it. So I thought about not going, but then if I don't go, she's not going to, she's not going to understand why I wasn't there. It right. Was, you know, nothing we brought up of it, I, but I'm, I'm not confrontational. And so I didn't want to cause a scene. And so the, I, I get home from Illinois it's Sunday, the party Sunday night. So I told my husband, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to be a big girl, but she's going to know that it didn't make me happy. So I put on my camouflage coat, my camouflage hat, and I headed down to the brew pub 
And it just worked out well when I walked in the door, she was sitting at her easel by herself and setting stuff up. So I went over and she's like, oh, Brooke, hi, how are you? And I'm like, well, I'm good. And she's like, I haven't seen you forever. Yeah. And I said, is it okay that I'm here? She's like, well, of course, why wouldn't it be? I said, well, I saw your post on Facebook last week and your hate for hunters. And you know that I'm an avid hunter. So I just wanted to make sure that it was okay that I was here. You talked about wanting to kill hunters and you know, is it safe for me to be here or not? And the look on her face was priceless. I kept my calm and she's like, well, it's just those trophy hunters. She's like, I don't understand why people need to go over there and kill rhinos and lions and tigers and whatever. And bears on my, yeah. Exactly. I said, well, I said, I said, there's animals I wouldn't hunt if I were over there, just my personal opinion. But I said, do you understand how much good it does for that country? I mean, the meat goes to the villages, the money that the hunters pay go to conservation to, you know, protect the animals from the poachers. And well, no, I, I didn't realize any of that. Hmm. Well, so I just, I left it at that. I went and sat down in my spot. And so the, we were supposed to be painting some covered bridge scene. And so everybody started painting and I just sat there and looked at my blank canvas. Everybody else's canvases are bright red and mine's still just blank white. So about halfway through, I decided what I was going to paint. So I just painted the words proud hunter with an arrow on it. And I just, <laughs> I just left it at that. Every oh. time I walked by, she just looked at my canvas and kind of gave one of those nervous giggles and like would grab my shoulder and then like, um, so I, I showed a couple people what I painted. I didn't get in the group picture because I didn't want to <laughs> cause a scene, but I wanted her to yeah. know that what she did wasn't right. And um, like a month later, she reached out to me through Facebook and you know, wished me a Merry Christmas. And, and so I took another opportunity just to, because she doesn't understand the difference between poachers and trophy hunters. So I wanted to take the opportunity to try to explain it to her. And I'm, her ears were closed. She, she, wasn't, she just wanted to argue about it. So, sure, sure. So I just walked away from that point. But um, I will never do business with her again. I mean, that's right. just, I guess my right. one little single person protest, but I feel better about it. So, oh well, yeah. So she falls into the 10% that I was mentioning that th those people are never going to be swayed. Right. Right. Not, you know, you can beat the horse to death and they're never going to learn anything. You can sit there and tell them time after time after time, why such and such is good. And their beliefs are still going to be their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it's so much about getting after that percentage of people as it is getting after the lady that's like, so Brooke, uh, tell me about, you know, what, what's this lady saying about trophy hunters? Is this true? That person Perfect. is then, I, I don't know the word I, I would guess, it, you know, coachable maybe. I don't know. Not that yeah. we're trying, not that we're trying to form people into what we want, but, but I pride myself on like, I'm registered at, in getting into the personal stuff, like as a nonpartisan, right? I don't, I don't like believe 100% in one side of anything political. I want to get the story of what's going on on both sides, why this is good and why this is bad for my own opinion and make a vote, right? That's, uh -huh. that's, uh, you know, an educated decision. And I think that all too often, like that lady probably has, I mean, still to this day, you know, she's like, Oh yeah, I remember that one time Brooke was going to kill me. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's probably what she thought when she was rubbing you on the shoulder was like, Oh, I think Brooke wants to kill me right now. So I'm just gonna, yeah, she's a, Brooke lifts a lot of weights. She's going to smash the bug. So that's a, that's a freaking hilarious story though. I'm really glad you shared that. It's, it's, it's true though. Um, you know, there's a couple people like at my work where I work with a girl. So I work on an ambulance. So your, your relationship with your partner is, is pretty close, right? You guys got each other's backs you go in some crazy ass situations together and whatever. And so she's like five foot four and like 140 pound, like little free spirited hippie chick. That's my partner. And so I'm like, geez, this is not going to be good. Right. Like not at all. But so now we've had so much time to talk and, you know, like five hour drives, Portland and back and stuff from Roseburg that you realize like her and I are pretty, she doesn't actually hunt. Right. But she, she buys her beef from a lady that's local that, you know, it's all grass fed and the lady, you know, goes and kills her cattle and slaughters them and, and does everything herself in house. And that's who she buys everything from. So like, then she's like, Oh, wait a minute. And so, so her opinion on hunting is completely different now 
than it was three months ago when we started working together because she's like, Oh, so why are you, why, why are you running around with 80 pounds on your back again? Can you tell me that? Yeah. Or like, why, why are you shooting your bow, you know, 40 times a day or whatever? And I'm like, well, because I want to shoot something through both lungs or through its heart or whatever. And I don't want, you know, like what I was telling her is like, you know, I want to know how that animal lived and you know, how it, it's its entire life was spent in a natural way right mm -hmm. and the same thing like i don't have anything against you know the ranching community and raising grass-fed beef and and whatever and you know that whole thing's great i you know my best friend owns a big cattle operation and so i've been in that industry myself but i i think that if you know where it comes from you feel better about it and so she's the same way right she'll pay a ton more money not as much as we pay right in gear and right. everything else and when you factor in like i i hunt ducks and geese a lot and like you factor in the cost of a pound of goose meat it's like a thousand dollars so so it's just funny because because like you said that lady um was totally against anything you had to say she she put on a a, a face for you for a little bit and was like oh brooke they're there and mm -hmm. you know i kind of had the same a similar situation with a completely different outcome you know, at first she was probably like this ignorant redneck bastard. Like he, you know, just goes out and shoots animals when like the truth is I paid, you know, I bought a leftover tag. It's $48. It's hanging on my wall. So where's that $48 go? You know, so her and I've had that conversation multiple times too, is like, listen, I, I spend $300 a year in licenses, tags. And this year I'm up to like 800 cause I'm hunting out of state. Um, you know, and I bought a new bow this year. So there's a thousand bucks and you know, percentage of that goes into it. So mm -hmm. when you think about, I, I hate the the rhetoric that's pounded in over and over and over. I've, I, I was talking with Derek about it, protein rich wild meat to bring home to my family and hunters are conservationists. I, I almost cringe every time I hear all of those things because I feel like it's just, just a, a false safe. And I talked about it on my last podcast and I just think that the more, um, you get personal opinions on the matter like that. You know, we have a discussion with our personal opinions and, and she forms her own. And so I think that's more important than having this, this beat to death rhetoric of, of, you know, wild meat. Cause we can buy that, right? You can, right. you can buy grass raised beef and it's tasty. I'm good. Right. I'm sure you guys have eaten it. You, and, and elk steaks are great, and so are deer steaks. But you throw a big old T-bone on the grill, and I'm not going to say no. <laughs> yep. So that's yep. just just the way it goes. So. And I think it's our. I think it's the way we try to explain what we do. I mean, yeah, it's, you can't get defensive and you know, like I'm better than you. I'm a hunter. Da, da, da. I mean, you've got to like you know take it like you said, like you know just explain, give them the facts, and let them you know form their own opinion. Listen to what they have to say, and yeah. I mean. Yeah. But I, but we, you also can't be afraid to tell somebody you hunt because you love to hunt, right? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I remember going through when I was younger, um, just watching like the outdoor channel and I would watch everything up to the hunt. And I was sensitive enough still at the time that like I would watch everything or not up to the hunt, but up to the shot. So I'd watch everything from them farming these food plots and, and it was all whitetail hunting, right? There was very few elk hunts um mm -hmm. on tv then but i'd watch everything and right when they were about to shoot the deer i changed channel <laughs> and 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 so it was like i don't know i i don't know what it was right it, but but the what it says to me is like i still don't like seeing anything die right right you can still feel bad about some oh we got to plug it in no no it was just getting really hot the sun. Sun. <laughs> oh okay yeah, I'm in, like I said, I got the air conditioner blasting. It's still like 900 degrees in here. Yeah, we don't want to be in my house right now, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, super <laughs> hot. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I was sensitive enough. And that's the thing, I think, too, is, like, people don't necessarily want to see you killing something, right? Like, you know, if, you're, if your neighbor doesn't hunt or something you, and you hang your deer from a tree in the front yard and you're skinning it out there, they're sensitive to that. But, you know, if you walked over with a package of, of – vacuum sealed steaks and we're like hey would you want this people see that and they're like well maybe you know mm -hmm. so i think uh being being conscious of other people's like sensitivity towards it is a big thing too and you get you know whatever the grip and grin thing is that's going on people have been doing that for years it doesn't bother me right 
but wipe a little blood off the animal or crop that crop that out right you know because what are we doing really is giving like adding fuel to the fire and serena's laughing what are you laughing about i'm laughing because i don't know i i post pictures of like me you know helping my son skin my buck and things like that because it's just teaching him right you know the whole process and so i think you know, if you post it like that, where, I mean, obviously you can see blood and you can see the meat, but I still feel like it tells like a backstory kind of almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like uh, a lot of the bigger names in the industry. You know, those guys have been posting the famous backstrap photo lately. And, right. you know, I'm all about that. Like, and, and guys that are bigger that have a bunch of anti hunter hate, you know, they say, well, I got to post it as like a sequence of events. Like, I've got to post the journey of how I got there and how I got to this certain point and all of my, my preparation and then everything leading up to it. And then I've got to post a picture of the meat and a, a backstory on how much I appreciate the animal before I can even po post a picture of, of the antlers. Right. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be ashamed of the antlers. Right. right. I mean, that's, that's, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, remembering the hunt, you know, if you go, to a, a whatever you said sip and paint create thing right and and say like it's for a good cause it donates ten dollars to st jude's or something so like that doesn't mean you're not you're just going to post a picture of yourself with a paintbrush and be like hey i just donated ten dollars to st jude's you're going to post a picture of the painting and like right. i painted this and also did this you know so it's i don't know it's it's super weird but people are always going to be that way right no matter what somebody's going to hate on you for something oh yeah yep. so even if your teeth are too white <laughs> yeah that is true you are, if you could scoot over just a little bit you're you're blinding me with your super white teeth <laughs> no Ugh. mine look white because my webcam sucks and it's like blurring out the rest of my face <laughs> so, um yeah uh i mean i don't really I don't really know where else to go besides i mean do you think there's a there's like still a big is there still like a large group of people that think like hey women shouldn't be out here doing the same thing right like i'm not gonna lie to you if, if so say i was hunting with Chantel and she got tired three miles up the trail and was like hey i don't want to go anymore oh i'd turn around and walk her back to the truck right but if i'm hunting with my buddy chris and he's like, Hey man, my knee's really bothering me. And we're five miles in. I'm like, well, stop being a puss hike back to the truck. Then I don't care. So like, there's still always going to be a double standard, right? I'm always going to be more protective, even if it's like, you know, not my girlfriend, but any, any, you know, a kid or a lady or someone that you're hunting with, you're going to be like, Hey, all right, let me walk you back. And then I'll come back in, you know, instead of hunting with a buddy where I'm like, dude, you're really being annoying. Like, <laughs> go leave i don't care like i'll call you when there's meat to pack right mm -hmm. so is there always do you think that double standard's going to be a thing forever or or what like i don't know that it's a double standard i think it's just i think that's i think that's just in men's dna and i mean that's part of the that's part of the thing with the hunting camp that we've found is um those who do have spouses or significant others you know, if, if the gal's trying to load a rifle or whatever, the husband, he just instinctively wants to do it for her if she's struggling. Mm -hmm. Anything that we struggle with, our spouses want to, they want to help us. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't like to see us struggle, mm -hmm. but we need to struggle so that we can learn how to do it and figure out what works for us. Exactly. Right. So. We all struggle the same way. <laughs> but I'll, I'm super guilty of that. Like, I always check with Chantel. I'm like, hey, uh, is your scope zeroed? You know, do you have, do you have, five, you know, four rounds under the bolt. Like, is your gun loaded? Is your safety on? You know, mm -hmm. I run through the whole damn thing. Like it's no, no joke. Like, Hey, do you have this in your pack? You got your tags, you got this, your boots laced. So like, it's funny though, cause I'm like that with my husband because yeah. I'm a hunter and he's not. So I'm like, do you have your toilet paper? Do you have your tag? Do you have your knife? But oh, toilet paper is toilet paper is the big one. Absolutely. That's one that like, you know, I could easily cut a sleeve off, but I've always got to keep toilet paper now, you know, for when she tell us to go pee. So that's something I've never even considered before I started hunting with her. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot you guys did that. So it's, uh, it's freaking Pretty funny. But I'm kind of a selfish hunter. Like my pack is my pack. Yeah. 
If you eat your snacks before nine, that's not my issue. <laughs> oh, I eat so many snacks. I'm like, I think I'm like borderline uh, diabetic. Like I am always running on the low side of sugar. So I eat a ton of snacks. I probably eat like 3000 calories before five o'clock. <laughs> Otherwise I like get shaky. You do pack a lot of food. We yeah, eat. I pack a ton of food. Yeah. Oh, how much does your pack weigh? I'm like, well, I've got a windbreaker and like 40 pounds of almonds in here. So <laughs> if you're interested, come jump right in. I got, I'm like, uh, my guilty pleasure when hunting is nutty bars. Yeah. You know, those things. Oh man. They melt <laughs> in the package or whatever, but I just, if I go hunting and there's no nutty bars and I keep like a super warm Coors Light somewhere in the bottom of my pack. Oh, I, you no say that. Beer, though. I yeah. mean, you gotta have it. You kill and, something. Yeah. You gotta have a cowboy warm Coors Light. Yeah. You know, you got to wash down the success. Right. That's right. I don't know. What's the, what's the hunting snacks that are in your pack? Tell me, I guarantee you it's something insanely healthy and gross. Yeah. Well, we eat really healthy. Like, yeah. My favorites, I like cold pancakes and peanut butter. Oh yeah. That sounds actually pretty, pretty decent. It's so good. And it's high in protein. Yeah. You got your carbs. It keeps you full. Probably are they like, like protein pancakes though? Or are they just legit like Bisquick? Well, I don't eat Bisquick. <laughs> They're <laughs> Pamela's gluten-free pancakes. They are delicious. I swear you would like them. All right, I'll check them out. I was gonna run the. I was gonna try those Kodiak cakes, but I ended up making some like out of protein soup. powder. Thing. Yeah. I, it's I just probably... like. Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was saying I just like grind up oats and like an egg white and some water. Maybe I think maybe goes in there. I don't remember. Um, and those things come out pretty good. Mm -hmm. You got to try those for, uh, I eat them, the chocolate ones with Nutella on them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those things are legit. What were you going to say, Brooke? Sorry, I cut you off. Oh, I was just going to say, probably my guilty pleasure in my pack is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's not even a guilty pleasure. But I, hate, I do hate when people try to make, I hate when people try to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich healthy. Like, oh, but I've got nine grain bread. This is you. You're smiling because this is you. Like, I got nine grain bread and all natural strawberry this preserves <laughs> and, and Adam's peanut butter or something. No. If you do the proper peanut, peanut butter, butter and jelly. It's disgusting, by the it way. It is. Yeah, it's gross. Yes. You've got to get, like, Simple Truth or something. Nothing no, with the some, oil crap on the top. That's or some, some of the goober stuff that's got the peanut butter and jelly together. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I'm just, you can't try, and I, I also pack a ton of Uncrustables. Those things are my shit. <laughs> Basically, if, you, if you're asking what I eat, it's like no thousand grams of sugar. No wonder so much during a hunt, because you're eating crap. No, I eat, like, mainly jerky and almonds, and then uh, a sneaky little um, nutty bar. Sugar that's, crash. Uh, that's all right. Jerky, and, jerky and almonds are not a sugar crash. No. No. No, nope. that's my main go-to is that's it right there. The nutty nope. bar is maybe like a camp food while I'm waiting for dinner to be ready. <laughs> yeah. I just try to stay away. Do you guys, are you into making your own meals? Like if you hunt the back country or you guys still eat, do you guys eat like mountain house and stuff like that? I eat Heather's choice. Oh yeah. That stuff's really good. Or, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I'll, I'll freeze dry my own or dry my own, you know, vegetables and fruit and stuff like that. But you know, for the most part, I just don't have the time to individually make, you know, like dried meals like that. So I just buy them. You know? Yeah, I got on that website. It's like backpackers, backpack something, backpack meals. I don't remember. I heard a podcast about it. So I looked them up. Um, that thing's super cool. They have a cookbook with tons of meals that you can make on a dehydrator, like chilies and tacos mm -hmm. and all this stuff. I need to get into that. Because the stuff that they sell, like Heather's Choice is really good, but how many nights can you eat salmon chowder in a row for? 11. <laughs> Super yeah. good. I don't know. I like their dark chocolate chili. That's like, I can eat that every day. Yeah. yeah. That and pacaroons and you'll live forever. Absolutely. I just got a shipment of pacaroons. Are they yeah. wonderful? <sighs> but you have to... You have to order them like two days before a hunt. Otherwise, you'll eat them all and then you, then you won't have any to take with you. Right? Oh, yeah. I eat them all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah. What no, do you I, do? Uh... Like when I'm in my pack, I, my big thing is I used to eat 
crap when I was out hunting and then I felt yeah. like crap. So mm -hmm. I, like I said, the peanut butter and jelly, that's kind of off the wall for me, but yeah. everything else is fruits and veggies, um, meat and cheese, just basically salami and cheese. Salami and cheese. I mean, that's, that's what I eat every day, like for lunch. So that's yeah. what goes in my path. Mine's so. like tuna. I, I always like throw a can of tuna on a salad. That's like my thing at work. Yeah. because I work night shift too. So there's not even like the chance to possibly be like, Hey, let's run to the store and get something decently healthy. Yeah. It's like, Oh, okay. Well let's eat at the gas station. Like if you forget food. Right. So that's yeah. pretty awful. So I always try and pack like a uh, tuna. I like live on those little individual packs of tuna. Those are awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't know how I eat so much fish these days, but <laughs> whatever. Salad, tuna, avocados. I always throw an avocado in my backpack. So and yeah, like a little baggie with some seasoning salt in it. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Plain, I'm not a plain guy. Um, <laughs> it's, I don't know. Hunting snacks. That's like a, that's one that everybody varies on. Everybody's got like a, a guilty hunting snack. Mm -hmm. Well, cause like, I mean, especially deer season when I only rifle hunted, I mean, it's right before Halloween. So all the little snack size candy bars i mean oh, yeah. growing up that's like was our staple yeah the snicker like, bars we used to buy like the little minis like the, like we'd have four or five bags of those <laughs> in our little uh food bag and that's all we ate yeah go out on a hunt and throw like five candy bars in your pack exactly hey not you still have to keep like an emergency snickers bar right, right. not to be not to be eaten but Perhaps if you get stranded overnight, you got 210 it's calories. Last. If it's in my pack, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you need somebody to just sneak it in there. Mm -hmm. Never tell you, but then you'll never find it. Right. So that's, that's not good. What do you got? So what's in your pack? If you guys are going, so let's say you guys go on hunting trips together, the two of you. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go on backcountry trips together or you guys just kind of do day hunts from camp or? We've just done day, We've hunts. Just done day hunts. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got? Have you, or have you guys been successful together? Yeah. Yeah. We, we killed our first turkeys this year. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Tell me about that. Cause I, I, for one, all of my buddies hate on me so hard for the amount of time I spend turkey hunting. They're like all that for a effing bird, $22 for a freaking bird. I'm like, Hey, listen, Isn't it 25 now. I don't know. I just give I them my card and tell them what I want. Um, yeah. but like <laughs> turkey hunting to me is like the pre -el it's like, drowns my elk hunting blues right absolutely because we have like there's tons of ranches and stuff around here where the guys are always like oh come on down and shoot one they live on my porch you know yeah. like, my buddy and i still we drive like 50 minutes from the house go up on forest service land like mm -hmm. get out pack a decoy pack a call take our bows like work our asses off and then and to not shoot a bird like but it's the most running and gunning for turkeys is a blast yeah. Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's how we did it this year too. Yeah. All spot and stock and. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't even call them in? Well, we did. Those yeah. bastards are smart. They are. Yeah. No, they're really stupid. They just see good and hear well. Yeah. That's kind of a downfall when you're trying to hunt. Them. Thank God they can't smell. <laughs> oh, I know. They'd be the hardest thing in the universe to kill. Yeah. But imagine if a turkey smelled like a bear did. Right. I'd be screwed. Right. Yeah. There'd be a million and a half turkeys instead of a million and a quarter turkeys. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. those exactly. things, they're everywhere. I yeah. took, I took Chantel. We didn't have the most time because I was spring bear hunting. We were spring bear hunting and, you know, all that. So we went out turkey hunting, I think two days or one day maybe is all we got to go out for her and I did. But uh, we, we, you know, you park, walk a little bit from the truck. And, and call and see if anything gobbles at you kind of like if you're hunting the west side for elk mm -hmm. and i i let out a hen call and these birds gobbled like i don't know 100 or 200 yards in front of us in this little depression so i was like oh come on let's go like the pickups literally right behind us like they heard us pull up and park and they're going off anyways and so i like sneak up and put the you know decoy out we drop back and it's like 75 degrees and sunny and like whatever perfect spring day and like these birds are gobbling and one's kind of like working towards us a little bit. We can't see it, but it's gobbling closer. And then the <laughs> freaking sky opens up and it starts like sleeting, like dumping snow. And Chantel is a cold body. So like instantly she's miserable. So we're, we're like chasing these birds up this draw. Anyways, we don't kill one. So I'm like, all right, well, that was fun anyways, right? 
So we go back, get in the truck, go down a little bit, and we see some more up in this draw. So I'm like, all right, the moment they feed over the top, we got to haul ass up there, and I bet you you'll get a shot at like 40 yards. She's shooting a shotgun. So I'm like, we'll just haul ass. So I, you know, we, I call, they gobble. They, I see the last one's head go over the top of this little knob. And I just start running. I like t- take off trucking and we're in like a little drainage ditch. And so I hear pitter pattering behind me running up the hill. It's probably like 250 yards or so. So I'm jogging up there. I got no pack, no gun, no nothing. I'm just cruising <laughs> and uh, just binos. Right. And I'm just cruising. And I like look back to tell her like, all right, there he is. Shoot. And I don't see her anywhere. So I'm like, what, what happened? <laughs> so like, so then I see her like, pouting as she like pushes herself up off the ground oh. up off, the, off the ground she's got like a fat lip and and like swollen face because she fell and smashed her face into her shotgun like so she's like i freaking hate hunting with you hi ah, never take me again and then you know <laughs> later that night she's like telling everybody about how fun it was but yeah it was, uh, it was super funny so <laughs> are you guys as turkey hunts as, as close to dysfunctional as ours <laughs> absolutely oh yeah <laughs> i think it must just go with turkey hunting i don't know yeah it's gotta yeah i think it's just one of those things too that like you're not really laying it all on the line with a turkey hunt you know you're you're like man if i kill a turkey i got like eight pounds of breakfast sausage if i don't right. like if i don't i'm out 20 bucks yeah let's go you know but it's fun right yeah i mean i i'd rather spring bear hunt during that time but because we were what we were three days Mm -hmm. doing for three days yeah yeah and we didn't we didn't actually harvest our turkeys till just before we were getting ready to go home on the last day Mm -hmm. so it was but we were in them every day and i mean yeah super fun get this close and then everything would change and were you guys shooting bows no No. we had our shotguns on that one yeah yeah turkeys with a bow is something i've missed so many turkeys with a bow I don't know. Like even at 3D shoots, I can't hit the the freaking 12 ring <laughs> on a turkey. I don't know why. Those things are so stupid to shoot. Yeah. I've killed some with a bow, of course, but like, um, I don't know. Those things are, I'd rather just put a shotgun bead on their head, right? Right. It's like the secret to success. Yeah. So if you guys are shooting shotguns, but what, what are we running for gear setups for, for bows for you guys? Because that's another thing. Um, a lot of ladies, I think, are pressured to pull more weight and you know, that kind of searching for that speed. We're like, Chantel, I think she pulls probably 45 pounds or so. She doesn't hunt elk with a bow, Mm -hmm. but you know, we moved her up to a little heavier arrow with a little heavier tip this year. And, um, you know, I, I have no problem with her shooting a deer out like 60 yards with it. You know, you guys running for setups like weight and draw length and all that. And how's it performed for you? Yeah, we we both run the round. Well, I run round six. You rain the rain six, and you have the rain seven. seven. Um, oh, both shoot Botex, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. both shoot Botex. Um, but, well, I guess we we both do Black Eagle arrows too. But I run the rampages with the half um, half ends, half outs, a little bit heavier in the front for more yeah. penetration. Yep. And I run the zombie slayers. Oh yeah, cool. That's what I shoot too. Is the I shoot the X impacts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yep. those are pretty. They're good arrows. Yeah, they are. Um, I've got actually two bows, so they're both rain sevens. Um, so I have my one that I used for hunting and 3D shoots. So I've got it set up. I'm pulling 60 pounds on it, and then my other one's for trained to hunt and doing like spot shoots. And I think that one's set up at 45. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I totally want to set up another bow, at, just like at 60 pounds, like a speed bow for shooting yeah. um, 3D and like trained to hunt. I'm already thinking of like, all right, I'm gonna set up because like. A couple of those yard yardage estimation targets are, are deep or like pokes, you know, there's like 55 yards. Yeah. So if you're off two yards there, you're going to miss. Yeah. You know, yep. with the, I'm shooting like 490 grain arrow. So mm-hmm. I'm on the heavy, heavy side, like right around 275, 280. So mm-hmm. like there you're going to miss. But if I'm shooting at 310 with a super light arrow, you know, I'll hit that. So I'm thinking yeah. about, I'm left-handed, so I never get the good deals or hand-me-downs right so i got it but you're pulling 60 pounds not by well not by choice oh, okay so i well i upgraded my bow last year after the stevens pass shoot and that's when i bought i decided i wanted to get the seven mm-hmm. 
well, when I make up my mind, I want something, I want it now or <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. so they didn't have any of the sevens at the bow shop. They're going to have them in the following week. Okay. I can wait a week. So when I went in, all they had were 70 pound limbs. So I said, well, let's see if I can pull it back at 60 and I, I could. So lefty came home with me. So oh, yeah. I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait any longer for lighter limbs. So, <laughs> so you're shooting it, but you're probably, are you working up on that too? Do you want to pull more weight or what? No, I'm fine. I'm happy with 60. I yeah. Mean, no, that's with the, with today's, you know, gear we got it. Come on. I yeah. know a couple of my buddies pull 80 and I have a, a bum shoulder, so I can't pull 80 pounds. I pull my bows like right maxed out at 72. I'm shooting mm-hmm. one of the new, the new hyper forces, but I'm getting, just just over 280 with with like a 490 grain arrow so i got zero complaints yeah like yeah shooting a telephone pole at 280 i i can't complain no absolutely serena you're running a rain six what what do you pull for weight mm-hmm. right at 55 yeah so i mean you guys are smoking arrows though it's no joke yeah broadheads you guys shoot the same broadheads or what um i've shot kudus last year and i'm probably gonna do the same thing this year yeah shot what slick tricks last year i think i'm, I'm gonna move to kudos this year give yeah me, yeah i thought about it i don't know i i'm like uh you could call me a bit of a gear junkie perhaps <laughs> i like to try different things so like if you look i have a tackle box that i have all my archery stuff in like for points and stuff and it's like a whole two rows of broadheads right like i try all kinds of different stuff just just because and like turkeys i shot the rages um, yeah, the expandable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they they kill turkeys pretty quick. Um, yeah. And like I've shot the G5 strikers and the four blade, the tooth of the arrows, and so I might try. I might run like three of the VPAs this year and like two kudus or something. You never know. Like, whatever, whatever yeah. I decide, whatever I'm feeling. It. If you tune your bow right, they'll both shoot. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Do you uh, have you guys shot anything recently with your bows with that setup? I got a turkey in California. Oh, cool. Do you have family down there or something? Or you guys are from there? You yeah, my mom's, my mom's from there. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was wondering because it's not yeah. the friendliest state to hunt <laughs> if you're not from there, you know. No, it's not. <laughs> so I, that's where I'm from. I used to live down there, and that's where I, I cut my teeth at was shooting pigs with a bow. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So I learned real quick about not shooting light, fast arrows. <laughs> um trying to punch through that plate there that they got going on so yep. so what do you guys got going for the year what are your plans what are your hunts are you guys doing anything together i'm really missing not being at nationals right now for train to hunt yeah me too tough couple i did days. i did awful mm-hmm. i did really awful uh-huh. well let's get into that real quick we'll we'll finish off with the plans but okay. what about when did you guys it was this your first train to hunt brooke this is my second one Okay, and Serena, you were there, right? Yep, it's my first. First one. You did pretty good. Yeah, she did. Yeah, Wait, no, we did. Yeah, you guys both did well. I did off. I was like dead on the first loop. You know, like <laughs> I don't train with anybody down here, and so it's kind of hard to push yourself to the level yeah. you need to push oh, yeah. for. But like, I don't know if you guys do. You guys know Bo Yonker? Oh yeah. Okay, so Bo lives right up here near me, and so. After him and Jason get back from nationals, I'm going to have them on, on the podcast because they're competing together on as awesome. a team. And yep. so Bo and I and his girlfriend, Mara, who she won the, the teams with Jen. Yeah, I shot the 3D shoot with them. Oh, when she found that monster shed. Yes. Yeah, freaking dumb. Um, <laughs> she, she's going to set up some workouts. We're going to try and get a little group going down here, kind of like what they're doing up, what uh, Scott's doing up north. You awesome. Know, um, on our, on our local range down here. And I think that'll help a lot with being able to push each other. Do you guys train together? We no, no, I'm kind of a, I don't know. I'm just kind of a do my own thing sort of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of the same way. Yeah. Just, I mean, I think we're both super motivated. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was there every day, but you know, maybe having a buddy would have pushed me to do one more rep or, or run another hundred meters or something that oh, would have yeah. made a difference. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What works for one person doesn't work for another. So mm-hmm. for yeah. sure, for sure. What do you guys? I mean, what do you do for fitness? I know Brooke, you're on the H and C page, so I see what you're doing quite a bit. 
Yep. You're you're doing what I'm doing, being a bull in a china shop, trying to do right. some yoga. <laughs> yeah, actually, well, because I, I worked out with um, Elevation Fitness Training for starting, well, in February, year before last, when I decided I wanted to do Train to Hunt for the first time. Yeah. I'd never, I'd never done CrossFit. I mean, I've just always been active, changing mm -hmm. pipes, bucking hay bales, whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I never had like a workout routine. Um, when I got divorced, I really got into running. I don't know, just kind of like my release. So, so I was fairly confident in my running, but, um, no, Courtney and Steven helped me a lot just to prepare for what I needed to do. Cause I had no, I knew what I was going to need to do, but I didn't know how to get my body in shape to do it. Right. So that was huge. Um, and then I injured myself last November, uh, running a half marathon. So I've just been trying to heal that. This year, I really wanted to compete in three train to hunts, qualify for nationals, and go there. Um, but my leg had other plans, so so I just did Oregon, and have kind of taken a break per se. So I haven't I haven't ran since train to hunt. Um, so that's healing up. I've been going to the gym, doing yoga, just doing a lot of weight training, shooting my bow a ton. So yeah, good. So next year, next year, three train to hunt qualifiers and nationals. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Uh... I was talking with Taylor Wells about possible we might compete as a team at, at one of them. Awesome. And uh, my cousin, John, I'm, I'm hunting in New Mexico with him this year. We drew a mule deer tag, archery mule deer tag in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, thinking we might, we might do Arizona or something as a team. Um, yeah. So I'll probably do Oregon as an individual. So I could, I could finish behind uh, Trevor and Mitchell and Jason again, <laughs> and uh, you know, go, go run for second place um, in Oregon. Loser. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. You get to turn that one around on me. Um, weren't you, you were first loser this year too, right? Second loser. Second loser. <laughs> right. Yeah. Second loser. Okay. Yeah. There's some chicks that were lights out there though. Like watching Rihanna run that thing, I was like, "Oh yeah, she'd blow me out of the water <laughs> for sure." Yeah. Yep, yeah. Um, but all you guys did pretty awesome. But yeah, hopefully I get to do a few next year. Um, I know Chantel is wanting to compete this year, and she yeah. she always had like some hip injuries and back problems and stuff. And so since she's really gotten to fitness, all that's kind of kind of fallen to the wayside. And so. So now she was like super regretting it, not competing at the last one. She yeah. felt bad instantly when she got there. Like kind of the same as ladies hunting camp. The the family is a huge deal there. And so yeah. I, think, I think a lot of people, I mean, when <laughs> I was joking with Jesse, cause there's that picture of Kenton in the magazine. Right. Looking all jacked and handsome running through the woods. And I'm like, <laughs> when you see that, you're not like instantly like, Hey, my average, you know, beer drinking self can go out there and compete. But, <laughs> um I think the pe uh, people why do you think people hate on it so much like you get all of these people that are like you don't need to freaking do that to hunt or you know whatever like you're doing too much because there are tons of people that are like all right I do nothing I just grab my bow I drive around the roads of eastern Oregon and mm -hmm. I punch the trigger at a mule deer buck and I heart shot him at you know 40 yards and I do that every year and right. those guys are s somehow successful but yeah. but then they hate on the people like you guys and like myself who are trying to better ourselves and mm -hmm. so i don't do you think it's just that that they feel insecure about that or that somebody goes a little further and they're uncomfortable with it or i don't i don't understand why people hate so much i don't i think it's a combination of things i mean i think there's a little bit of maybe guilt there that they know they could do more but mm -hmm. maybe don't want to and I know like over here, we have several 3D shoots and a lot of the per se hunters, they think they're stupid, which I mean, I enjoy going, getting in the practice, you know, working on judging yardage and whatnot. And those guys that hunt all the time and that are super successful, I don't know if they're afraid of going and failing and not right. being feel cool or, right. or what it is. It, yeah. it, again, you just have to leave your ego at the door and, you know, yeah. nobody's judging you. Nobody's... I don't know. But yeah, I get a lot of grief for running down the highway with my pack on and yeah, do that. that's stupid. And well, I don't want to have to call somebody to come and help me pack something out if I, mm -hmm. you know, am successful. Well, so. You better call me though. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you be you guys are only, you're only in Brineville. If you ever need a hand, let me know. Okay. <laughs> we'll be there. Especially if it's, if it's elk season, I'm already over East. 
Just yeah. Keep it out. I think that's a big thing. Jesse mentioned that too, is that like any of the people that you met there, you could probably call, be like, Hey man, I got a bull in this shithole and I need some help. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. bad, yeah. right. It's hot out and I need somebody here. Like mm-hmm. I probably, you know, so long as I wasn't about to draw on a bull or anything, like we'd, we'd hike out and come help somebody, you know, that's just yeah. kind of how it goes. But I think that's part of the fun of it too. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I love to see other people be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. For sure. I don't, I get offended if my buddies don't call me. Like if you kill something and even if it's small mm-hmm. and you don't call me to come and help, like right. you're on the back burner for the rest of the season. I hate you now. Yeah. <laughs> It's like when Serena killed her turkey with her bow. She, I mean, she sent me a picture and I was, I was giggling and squealing and I was yeah. so happy for her. That's just awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair though, you don't need to help pack out. No. Pack out Serena's turkey. <laughs> I don't know. It was a pretty big it turkey. It was a big turkey. I mean. <laughs> hey, uh, maybe you did need help. I don't know. I thought you trained harder than that. Uh, uh, apparently not. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, the guys I work with make fun of me for training like I do and they think I'm insane, but on the same hand, secretly, I notice they're doing more hiking, and not to the extreme that I'm doing, but I, I think, I think it's kind of motivated them a little bit, so. Yeah, they're, they're secretly, and they're like, shit, Brooks, Brooks way more of a beast than us, we better, <laughs> better get after it. Um, yeah, I don't know, when you're around people that, that are doing that, though, you're definitely more inclined, right, to, mm-hmm. to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I don't think it's so much as, like, some of my friends that do nothing, they still beat me up the mountain, but I feel like in the morning, I probably feel better, right? Like I can go more days consecutively than they can. And, and with the 3D thing, um, I, I thought about that while you were talking about it. I think it's more of a, rather than judging yardage and getting good at shooting because the vitals aren't exactly like anatomically correct, right? Where, right. A, where a 12 ring is on an antelope target, that's not where I'm going to, I would shoot one right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think more of it is just pressure. Like when there's somebody standing behind you, watching you and this group of people with you, you feel pressure just like you do when you draw on an animal, right? Mm Because there's been so many times that I've shot something and somebody that's with me is like, where'd you hit him? Like, I don't know. Can't tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, I I have no clue. I I think it was a good shot. I don't know. We'll wait 30 minutes and and see what the arrow looks like. Or now you're watching the fletches, you know, you, you, you you've shot so many times under pressure that you get this shot process and, and you don't um, waver from it. Right. You don't, I mean, for me, a big thing has been, I I have like a tendon issue in my wrist, so I can't shoot a a finger release anymore. So I had to move to the thumb button and that's been like a struggle for a year and a half of trying to figure out how to shoot that thing. And now it's like, uh, you know, from working on that so much, you get that process. And, and I feel like, you know, this year when I draw down on animal with it, it's going to be kind of the thing where like, oh, I hit him on, on that hair, you know, the hair that I was aiming at is exactly where the arrow went. So mm-hmm. yep. I think that's a big thing with the, the 3D and I don't, I don't think you can prepare too much. I think no. you can psych, psych yourself out. <clears throat> well, that was my first year at trying to hunt. I was, that was my biggest downfall was my shooting. Um, and, and, and I mean, physically I was, I was way better this year than I was last year, but, um, but thank goodness I was as fit as I was because I missed three of those targets and had to do penalty burpees. Ooh, so, yeah. so, I mean, that was torture in the hundred degree heat, but, but like shooting the 3d course, cause year before last, we shot the 3d course first thing in the morning. Right. And, and I was about halfway through and then Courtney and Steven actually showed up and I instantly got nervous. Yeah. And I flubbed up a couple of shots that, weren't that hard and I should have made better shots. And, and my husband told him, I think you're kind of stressing her out. So, but I, I really had a problem shooting with strangers or, you know, I just felt people were watching me and judging me and I let them get in my head. And so I, thank goodness. I mean, I qualified for nationals and that month in between the qualifier and nationals, I mean, I shot, I tried to shoot with a bunch of different people. I'd go to 3D shoots and just jump in with people I didn't know just to try to kind of overcome that fear. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it got better. And then this whole last year, I started doing spot shoots and I've hit as many 3D shoots as I can and just shooting with all sorts of different people and situations and yeah, just, and it, and it's helped. So. Yeah, it's definitely where I wavered as well. And I, I think as far as like the, the run times and everything went, I was like seventh or eighth or somewhere around there. And my shooting was so piss poor. 
that I, I just like fell right out of any chance. You know, if I would have shot well, I probably would have finished fifth, maybe sixth or whatever, but I shot so awful. Just, you know, a combination of, I had a little mechanical issue, but that wasn't something that couldn't have been, you know, overridden by, you know, I, I could have shot eights all day, but instead I was shooting, you know, I missed a few and, and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. so I imagine we'll see you guys there next year, both of you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so now we'll get into the plans. <coughs> I try to keep some sort of organization as we rabbit hole. So plans for the year, where are you guys hunting at? Oregon, just Oregon. Yeah. So, well, no, I see what we got archery elk and deer here coming up and end of August. And then, yep. Oh, but before that I drew a antelope hunt. So I'll be bow hunting for antelope. Then we go straight into archery. And then I actually drew um, Iowa muzzleloader whitetail for January. Iowa? Yeah. Okay. You have family there too, or are you just guessing? Nope. Nope. Just going. Oh, cool. Yep. Going with some friends. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then turkey and bear and yeah, cycle starts over. Yeah. You know, I love bear hunting. That's I freaking love bear hunting. Throw a little waterfowl in there. Right. Yeah. That's so, that's another thing. All everybody rags on me for the waterfowl hunting too. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my favorite things. I got yellow lab. We we spend a lot of time together in the marsh. Yep. During yep. those labs too. That time of the year. So Brooke, what about you? Where are you hunting at? Um, so archery elk here in Oregon. Yeah. Rifle deer in Oregon. And then um, I'll do fall turkey, and it's still up in the air, but it looks like I'll be going to Kentucky for a whitetail hunt probably in November. Cool. And then, yeah, spring bear and turkey. So You guys are expanding. Yeah. Hunting whitetails. I, we were going to do Idaho this year, and it's just not going to work out. I picked up an extra elk tag, and I've got that New Mexico mule deer tag, and who knows what – fire season is going to do they send us out as as line medics for the fires mm -hmm. so who knows what the, i don't even know if i get to hunt you know september elk season so i think this is the last year i'm going to work fires though we're we're trying yeah. to buy a house i need the cash but yeah. uh i think next year i'm taking september off <laughs> Sounds like a but, great uh, plan. yeah yeah it does so you guys have any closing thoughts we're i think we're getting long on time here not that it really matters but I mean, any closing thoughts as far as, as – this started out as like, a, as like a women's empowerment speech, and we've turned it completely into Barbie hunters and <laughs> stuff, which is – that's what podcasts are about, right? I mean, yep. going wherever the hell you want, nobody telling you you can't. Exactly. exactly. So yeah, I mean, I'd like to plug the hunting camp again. I mean, I know we're getting close for this year, but next year, any gals that, I mean, are interested in hunting or – have hit a wall or just curious or whatever. I mean, the hunting camp is for everybody. And yeah, you're looking for some friends, right? Yep. Absolutely. Hunting buddies. Yeah. I mean, I, I talked to a gal, uh, she lives, she actually lives in Lapine, but she's been to the camp two years in a row now, I think, or I guess this will be her second year, but a lot of people are coming back from last year and she's like, she's made more friends just through camp. I mean, more deer friends than she's ever had. So, I mean, it's a, of course, I think the age thing has some, I mean, it's different than like high school friendships or whatever. I mean, yeah. Sure. Yeah. You, you, they're much uh, richer, richer friendships these days. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so uh, and I have the, the one question that has to get asked because I, I've made it my thing now. So it's going to, it's an individual for each, but um, if you could hunt one animal in any place in the entire universe, I don't care if you're like guessing that there's some sort of creature on the moon to hunt um, with anybody. You could bring as many people as you want, but it's just one animal in any place. Where would you go? What would it be for? And who would you take? And you can go anywhere with it. I've had some weird answers. Garrett said he wants to take the rock hunting for red stag in New Zealand. So you could say whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I think for me, um, my grandparents, they live on a ranch in California where I do hunt. 
blacktail every year, but it's actually a trophy unit for Roosevelt elk. And so Ooh. they give out like maybe 10 tags a year and it's super hard to draw for an out of state. So I would love to draw that tag because the bulls are huge. Yeah. Massive. Um, and I think I'd just take my family and Brooke. I mean, yeah. keep it simple. I mean, yeah. It's who I like to hunt with, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, you guys are like ride or dies now, you and Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> inseparable. You guys are always posting stuff together. You guys are inseparable now. Hey. Yeah, it just, it's been kind of crazy. Yeah. Where friendship grew and, yeah. yeah. What about you, Brooke? Where are you going? Who are you taking? I don't know where, you know, honestly, because I, I have not got to harvest an elk with my bow yet. So I just, I want a really nice Rocky Mountain elk. I'd really like to find him just in a deep hole in the Ochoco unit, just right outside my back door that all the guys who have hunted there for years couldn't find. Yeah. Um, and I would take my husband and Serena with me. So. Man, you guys are attached to the comedy relief and Serena and I would do the work. So. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to tag all our snacks. That's right. You can eat them all, though. <laughs> all the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches you could have, right? So, no, he right. them. Well, we couldn't pack those for Timmy. No. Timmy <laughs> puts them in his pockets when we go hunting. <laughs> Horrible. Oh, man. So if people want to contact you guys, how would they go about that? I'll put it in the show notes. So if, if they miss it here, they can find it there. So um, if they want to contact you guys just for – I mean, I'm sure you guys are welcome to a lady saying, hey, I'm having this issue, you know, with this. What can I do? How oh, do I yeah. get a hold of you? Absolutely. I think, like, for me, just DM me through social media. I respond to, like Courtney said, 98%. So if you're not a creeper, I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, if you're not like, hey, uh, Serena, I'm really having an issue putting ketchup on my hot dog. Can you, <laughs> can you help right. me out? So, Serena, what's your um, Instagram name then? Your handle? <laughs> Serena R. Thompson, just my name. All right. So that's S E R E E N A, right? Yep. Cool. And then you're probably set up as a public figure on there. So you have email and all that linked up. I don't think I'm a public, I'm not a public figure, but I think I'm going to call you a public figure. <laughs> you're <laughs> I, think, I think, let me look. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. All right. Serena, we'll put that. Yeah. Serena Thompson, entrepreneur. Um, Brooke, what about you? You are. Also available on Instagram, I assume. Absolutely. All right. More What's than your... a hunt. More than a hunt. Yep. All right. Well, ladies, it's been a pleasure having you on. I'm sure it won't be the last time. Um, like I said, we're going to have to get together, and I'm going to try and ship Chantel off to hang out with you guys uh, later this summer. Yeah. That would be yep. pretty sweet. I think she'd really if enjoy it. Right. We'll take good care of her. Yeah. We'll yeah. I'll give you, I'll give one of you guys a call later this week and see if there's room. Okay. But, uh, and then about ladies hunting camp, how do, if ladies want more information on that or whatnot, how do they just Google it? Ladieshunting.com. Ladieshunting.com. Yep. Or you can DM me or Brooke. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, if you guys got nothing else, I'm going to sign off here. I, uh, Really appreciate it, guys. I can't can't thank you enough for putting aside an hour and a half or so to chat. I appreciate it. And I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of good out of listening to us yap. So <laughs> thank you. And if you got nothing else, we'll, uh, we'll leave you be. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. All right, guys and girls. That was all of episode four. I think it was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Brooke, Serena, ladies, thank you so much for your time. I uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, sit around and have a good old conversation. I'm sure it could have went for five hours, uh, but we cut it short so we could save a little bit for future episodes. Ladies, I really appreciate everything that you're involved in to uh, help people get out and succeed in the outdoors. Um, so for that, I'm grateful. Now, if you are interested in entering the giveaway for the nature's paint combo pack, here's how you do it. 
when myself, Brooke, or Serena shares the screenshot of the Bow Hike Podcast logo when the episode is launched. If you comment on that, or you comment on iTunes or Podbean, you will be automatically entered into the giveaway for the Nature's Paint Combo Pack. So that's pretty cool. It's a good value because it's free. So you can't complain about that. All you got to do is take a second out of your day. So that'll be real neat. Um, Otherwise, guys, if you've gotten anything out of this episode or previous episodes and you've enjoyed listening, uh, go ahead and subscribe. It'll let you know when the new episodes are up and you won't have to uh, see it via social media. It'll just pop right into your phone and tell you this one's available for you to listen. So that's pretty nice. Um, Otherwise, I'm open to all kinds of feedback. So go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me if I'm doing a poor job or a great job or a mediocre job. I just want to know how I can improve and, uh, and be better so you guys have good content to listen to. So the winner for the giveaway will be announced at the end of next week's episode. Um, and I will, of course, message the winner and let them know. So you got to set up shipping details and all that. So that won't be until after the end of the show next week. Um, until then, I really appreciate your listenership, if that's a real word. And I hope you continue to tune in. And I hope I continue to bring you stuff that's worth listening to. So that was episode four. Thank you for tuning in to the Bow Hike Podcast. I'm signing off.